Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Divine Intervention. I am your host, Davina Stallworth, and we have a special guest with us today who has mm, gone through so many things, but he wants to talk about today how he overcame adversity and how he found peace and how you can find peace. Uh, we had a long talk in regards to the show on today, and he has a lot of good information. So I want you to sit back and relax and take notes today, because there's a lot to learn, because it's not just about you, but it's about others that you are called to minister to. All right, let's go ahead and bring on our guest today. It's uh, Minister Keith um, <clears throat> Griffith, Helen with us all the way from Georgia. So let's just bring him on. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Keith, how are you doing today? It's so good to see you. I am well, Sister Davina. It's good to see you too. Wow. Uh, it, we had such an awesome time yesterday and I want the world to know how, I want the world to know your testimony, your story, your life and how you overcame because the title of the show is Divine Intervention. And we can honestly say today that you experienced a divine intervention. And I believe that you have a message, not just for your community, not just for your city, but for the world at large. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to open with prayer. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Mr. Griffith. And then we're going to move right into his testimony. Okay, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you that you're all knowing and all seeing that you're all delivered for you said you would deliver us out of all of our troubles. Lord God, we thank you, Father, that there is no one like you and nothing compares to you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you promote some, Lord God, and you and others, Lord God, that, that will be sat down, Father. But Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the Lord of all. You're omnipotent, omnipresent, Lord God, all seeing, all hearing, and all knowing, Father. So today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we surrender ourselves, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to use our mouths because we give you our mouths. Use our eyes, Lord God. We give you our eyes. Use our mind, Lord Father God. As we ask you, as we give that to you, Father, as we surrender our all to you, Father, to speak through us, Lord God, and may our tongues be the pen of a ready writer. So even in that, Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over everyone listening. We decree and declare, Lord God, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you shall be glorified in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So yeah. um, for those who are just joining us, this is um, our weekly show, Divine Intervention. We have a special guest with us on today. Um, mm -hmm. That is Thank Keith Griffin Helen with us all the way from Georgia. Now, here's the thing. I'm Wait, just going to tell you a little bit about him. But I think that many will be blessed by his story and many, many need to hear his story because like we talked about yesterday, and I, and I always say it's never about us, but it's always about mm -hmm. him and it's always about right. everyone else receiving exactly what they need to be delivered and set free. Amen. That's right. right. So, yes, ma'am. So Keith is was was he is not is he was an alcoholic. Um, he was born again on Mother's Day, 5-8-2011. He, now, what you must understand is there's always a background to these kind of things. So he actually came from an abusive home and he turned to uh, chemicals as an escape from the abuse that he was experiencing. Um, by the time he hit high school, it was a regular thing, but it was a little bit under control. It was recreational. Then in his late 20s, he says he turned to abuse. And by the time he hit his 30s, he was in and out of jail, broken relationships and jobs. The, I think one of the I think he said the turning point was one of the turning points was when his mother passed away in, tw in 2002. And then at that point, um, he the abuse was now to numb. So he's doing drugs, alcohols, et cetera, et cetera. He didn't want to feel anything because his mom, you must understand, was his best friend. And he loved her and he still loves her to this day. But mm -hmm. how many of you know that when you lose that 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 one thing or that person that you love dearly, it really breaks your heart. So you got to understand he's going through all of that. His mom has passed away and now his heart is broken. So he began to think about suicide. 
on a daily basis. So here's a whole bunch of a whole bunch, whole bunch, plethora, a lot of things that um, Mr. Griffin himself will had to go through the process of being delivered from these things. So we're going to talk about these things and how he allowed the Lord God Almighty to deliver him from these things. Because you got to understand that, you know, people can do this and people can do that. And God will use people to help you to get to the place where you need to be. But you got to understand you have to be able to make a decision to be free. Y'all know my story. And I had to make a decision to be free. Amen. So on March, amen. So on March 19, 2010, he says he awoke with no reason to live. He entered rehab and started attending AA and NA meetings daily. And then he began to attend church with a friend. And uh, he was led to Christ on Mother's Day 2011. And he has not turned back. You know, like I said, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. But this mm-hmm. man is on fire for God. He has an mm-hmm. active, living, alive relationship with the Lord. And I am so excited that he decided to be on this show, on this platform. So let's, with a hearty welcome, mm-hmm. let's welcome Mr. Griffith and let's go ahead and dive right into his story. So Mr. Griffith, as I may call you Keith, if you don't mind. Yes, please do, please. Yes. Okay, Keith. Um we would like to know, uh, let's hear a little bit about your background. Let's start there. We I, we just gave you, I just gave them a little touch or a little taste of your background. But what, can you tell us um, from the beginning, how did this start? How did, what would you say was the beginning of the abuse? What was the thing that um, caused you to turn to drugs? And even in that, then, it, and how did your mother play a factor in keeping you together? Well, Mr. Mina, it, 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 from as far back as I can remember, um, mom married him. Uh, I was one and a half, two. Um, and and he, had a, a, he had a daughter by his first marriage who was three months older than me, my sister. We share no blood except the blood of Jesus, but um, she's mine. She, she is my sister. But um, they married. We were both around two. Uh, I don't ever uh, I don't ever remember. The house was chaos as far back as I remember. Um, he was verbally, mentally uh, and physically abusive. Um, it, it, most of it was this is this is one of those things that that no child should ever need to know but um by about age seven or so i could see i could i could tell when one of his rampages was coming and Mm -hmm. um i learned how to direct it to me to deflect it from her oh my goodness Um, not a a skill not a skill a seven-year-old should know but i mean you know it is what it is um Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and with age, it just increased. Um, mm-hmm. He 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 despised me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I guess it. The best that I could tell is I reminded him of my father, mm-hmm. who my mother very much loved and did not want the divorce. So there was some some tension, some animosity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. It, it, it was just ongoing and, and, you know, I mean, there would be days that it wasn't, but there was still no, you, you walk on eggshells constantly uh, because you don't know what's going to set him off um, and, and, and who it's going to be aimed at. Um, so there was never, you know, there, there was never any peace. It was just, mm. um, just it, I mean, anxiety just covered up. Mm. Wow, that that had to, and you were seven years old, and you were protecting your sister. So this was your stepfather, is that correct, sir? That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is your stepfather. Your mother married him when she was about when you were about um, two years old, and so at this That's point, right. did the abuse start immediately, like right after they got married, or was there any time after that, or when did it start? 
I don't ever remember it not being there. So, you okay. know, I mean, my recollection, my recollection goes back to, you know, kindergarten. So what five is, is, is my, is really my soonest memory. I don't remember much before kindergarten, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, the, the, the verbal, the, the verbal abuse, uh, and the emotional abuse was there from jump street. It, it was mm -hmm. never not there. It, it was just who he was. I mean, it was, um, you know, it, it, that's who he was. It's he, his okay. insecurities, his lack, you know, it, it was, I don't ever remember it not being there. Okay. So, okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um, and, and now we know he's, so he was mentally abusive. He was um, physically abusive. Is that correct? Okay, yeah, so you know, now it, 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 you know, I say a lot of it was his insecurities. It, it was one of those things. I mean, and it didn't help. Um, my dad didn't want children. So, you know, shortly after I was born, he cut out. But, you know, you, you we talk all the time about that we have the, the, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Um, and, you know, you, you can have good people around you and you can have one person speak, you know, darkness into your life. And for whatever reason, we listen to that. But with my dad not wanting to be there, he took every opportunity he could to let me know that basically I was just useless and unwanted. Mm. Um, you know, it's like, you know, your own dad doesn't even want you. You know, y'all you know, y'all are lucky I took you in. Just that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, if 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 you tell someone they're dumb long enough, eventually it's they not true, but it. eventually, absolutely. It, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to seep into your, you know, into your soul eventually, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it is, it is what it is. It, you know? Yeah. It's, and, and I, and I can understand that because I, I, I know about that. So, um, Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. All right, so now you're a little older. Uh, let's say at this point, you know, the abuses continue. Uh, your mom and dad are still married. Now you hit high school. Okay, so what's going on now? You're in high school. Were there any? No. <clears throat> oh, I've left. Oh, no, I have left. No, no, left my sister was over. Oh, yes. Yeah, my sister was over. Um, she was over one weekend. And uh, I was 14 and uh, he had just had a huge blow up and uh, I had walked outside and um, she walked up to me and she goes, he's going to kill you if you stay in this house. Oh, my God. I was like, you know, I, 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 I'm like, you know, I have no options. You know, I was like, dad doesn't want me. I said, I'm 14. She's like, he's going to kill you. And, uh, you know, I left that day. Um, you know, and a lot of the guilt I carried, um, and, and tried to kill with, uh, <clears throat> with chemical and alcohol was, um, the fact that I left my mom there, you mm -hmm. know, at, at, you know, and everybody's like, well, at 14, what could you have done? It's like, well, I could have done more than I did, but you know, that's, uh, whether it's true or not, when you carry that around, it, um, it'll eat you if you don't let it out, you know, that this is. You know, you, you you can see as things start to layer themselves. If 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 you don't lay th these burdens and let these change, you know, I mean, you know, Jesus says, you know, yoke ourselves to Him, you know, and right. let and let Him. But you know, at this at this time, I don't have that. You know, all I have is is worldly, and uh, and 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 what I turn to to um, to to alleviate, uh, you know, to to numb that. So you but, were, but well, it sounds school, like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I think it sounds like to me that at this point you were in survival mode. So you're, we're talking from the time you were two, you're like 14, 14 years old. So that's like 12 years of consistent abuse in whatever form it came in. So now you're 14, you run away from home. So what happens then? Well, I mean, you know, I carry on, I, I did, uh, I did end up moving in um, my dad's house um, and him and his wife both made it very clear that um, 
and uh, they did not want that. But it really, um, I moved in the basement and really just kind of kept to myself. You know, my thought was, you, you know, you've got to get out of high school and then let some, you know, let's figure out what we're going to do from there. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it the um, survival mode is, is a pretty good word. But 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 Sister Davina, for for a brief second, from fourteen to seventeen, um, even though it wasn't the ideal situation, there was a little bit of normality there. I mean, mm -hmm. I could breathe. Um, I, I wasn't walking around just tense all the time, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for you know waiting. Uh, for, for what was next um so you know from 14 to 17 there was a little there really was a little normality mm -hmm. um but again uh, the, the um my use was not though it was regular and i mean like weekend regular uh, and like i told you before i i do not condone any use you, you call it recreational, you call it what you want. You know, I'm not trying to normalize it, but just, you know, to, to, to tell the viewers, you know, what it was. And, and it was just that for a few years. It was hanging out with my friends. I mean, see, and, and you've got to understand too, um, my social skills were horrible. Um, I, I, I was not allowed friends. Um, I went to school, came home, did chores and sat in my room till supper and then went back to my room and went to bed. I was not really allowed, you know, I would go outside, but I didn't want anybody to come over. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I didn't want friends to come over to the house and, and let them hear him, you know, how stupid I was. Why do you want to hang out with somebody as dumb as him? You know, I mean, it was, so my social skills are, are, are pretty much non-existent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, again, uh, drugs and alcohol, you know, knock that edge off of that. And I don't feel so out of place. And so because I don't know how to connect with people, uh, I, 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 that's a skill I had not learned, you know, from birth to 14, which you should, you know, you should have learned. So, you know, it, it turned from a, a, from a numbing thing to uh, I don't know if you want to call it coping, but, you know, it's some. Um, it, it, again, I use the chemical to uh, to ease my anxiety and to really kind of feel like uh, that I was accepted. Um, you know, so it, it it was an abuse, but I was still using it um, in the wrong way uh, to to you know to to make myself fit in. Okay, so at this point, what, so for those who are just joining us, welcome to another edition of Divine Intervention. We have a special guest today, um, <clears throat> Minister Keith Griffith, Helen with us all the way from Zebulon, Georgia. Uh, we are honored to have him with us. But what you, what we want you to know about him is this: God delivered him from from drugs, drug addictions, alcohol, so many different things from fear. Oh, it was so many things, but he's telling us about how, about his life and how his, how he overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of the, the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. So for those of you who have, if you're in any kind of addiction, you can take the principles of what you're going to learn today. And today we're just talking, it's a design mm -hmm. intervention, a design intervention to help those who are in any situation that is not conducive to the plan of God. Meaning, if you're into pornography, if you're into drugs, sex addict, um, alcoholism, whatever it may be, listen to Mr. Griffith's story and take these principles and learn from them about how God supernaturally delivered him from these things. So we're going to go ahead and continue with Mr. Griffith. Take it away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, as we get out of high school now, you know, I'm 17. Um, I, I'd been working. To, see, you know, I, I, I got a little freedom. Um, at 15, I started working and I had an income. And, and instead of 
pursuing, uh, you know, more education, I, um, I, I, I went straight to work. Well, when you're, you know, it, as, as I left high school, uh, I moved back to where me and mom came from, back to Marietta, uh, a little north of where I am now. Um, I'm in the workforce. Um, my usage is still what, you know, most would call um, a recreational thing. I'm drinking daily, though. Um, it, it, I mean, it's, it's a seven-day-a-week. Um, weekends were a little harder, but still – Trouble had not really shown itself yet. Um, outsiders, anybody looking in, anybody outside looking in saw nothing. Um, you know, I was at work on time. Um, I, I, it wasn't the, um, you know, you, you, you had this mental image of alcoholic. You've got some, uh, you've got a guy with a beard drinking a, a, a malt liquor out of a paper bag. You know, so uh, um, I didn't fit the um, I didn't fit um, the the profile, if you will, um, because I functioned uh, and I functioned well to um, to to live the lifestyle I was living. It took money um, and uh, I, I really did work hard. I had a good work ethic at this point. Um, and again, things had increased. Um you know, the, the, it was starting to fray, um, mm-hmm. and, and, it, and it's not so much. Um, it's not so much. It, it's it's what you'll allow yourself to do when you're under the influence of something else, a, a mm-hmm. chemical, an alcohol. Um, it, it wasn't legal trouble yet. It wasn't. It was. It was the sin that the drugs and alcohol led to it was the lifestyle is is where it really started to fray um uh, because i would allow myself um i would allow myself places uh inappropriate relationships um just i mean it it, it just rolled into it so you know you, you wake up you wake up in the morning and you know, you're somewhere you're not supposed to be and you spent the entire night doing something, you know, is not right. Um, so what do you do? You, you, you add more chemical to the equation to numb. Uh, you know, I made reference yesterday. It's like a snake eating his tail. Um, it's, it, it just, it just layers itself and it layers itself and it layers itself. And, you know, the, the more you do, and, and, and then, you know, the sin, sin is much like, uh, is much like a drug, you know, um, you, you, you take a prescribed amount and then over time that amount doesn't do it anymore. So you up the dosage. Sin is the same way. Um, you're, you're, and I say you, I, I'm, I'm speaking of me. My my deviant behavior. The more I did, the the higher that had to be. Um, it, it was just a just a, a, a just a never ending. Uh, you know, it, it was just self destruction. But it was you know, I, I tell people, um, mother brought me up right. Um, I was raised in a church. Um, in, in which I do tell people, you know, if, if, if you're listening now and maybe it's not you with the problem, maybe it's a loved one. Um, when I got to the bottom, I knew where to go because that seed had been planted, um, which I wasn't there yet. But I'm just saying, don't you know, if, 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 if you're in this situation, you know, continue to pray, continue to stand in the gap. Um, and intercede for this loved one who is going through this. But um, again, it, it wasn't the, the the drink that was causing. It was the drink that would let me make bad choices. You know, we were speaking of, of, of um, you know, how, how do you make, how, how do you train yourself to make, you know, th- these, these snap decisions? Hey, I, 
I've had a couple of drinks. I shouldn't be doing this. But, you know, there comes a point where I was just – that never even was part of the, the conversation anymore. I had done it so long. It was just what I knew. Um, and I, I, I just – I didn't know any other way at, at that time. And, and, again, the wheels had not fallen completely off the car just yet. So when did, so you were um, talking about, uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So give yes, me just a second. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, when did you, when did you start? So when did the, okay. So you started doing recreational drugs when you were in high school. No, I, I I got I, I smoked weed I smoked marijuana for the first time before I was out of elementary school. Okay, and when did you start drinking? Well, I was I was still I was still at home with with mom at that point in time. So okay. you know I, I was b before sixth grade I, I was high. Okay, I was so, drinking I was drinking before ele before I was out of elementary school I was drinking. Before I was out of elementary school I had been introduced to porn. So it, let me ask you, um, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 it, it, it you know, it was just, um, it, it was just, um, you know, it, it, I didn't even realize what it was, you know, and, and to, to, you know, it, it, at that age, there's no way you can have any kind of, any kind of grasp of, uh, yeah, and it was just it was just two guys across the street that lived from me that were older than me, and we were just in the yard, and it's like, hey man, we're gonna go out back and get high. You want to go? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I'm in, you know. And uh, but you know, you take a a a, a 10, 11 year old brain that is nowhere near, you know, mm -hmm. what it needs to be, and now you've you've added uh you've added a mind altering chemical, um, mm. man, my brain loved that. You know, I mean, it, 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 where, where I was in the world and all of a sudden I can just forget that, you know, I can forget what I've got to go home to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, my brain embraced that. Wow. Wow. So it, it, it was uh, like you, you talked about earlier, <clears throat> it numbed, to you, it numbed yes. the situation, it numbed the pain. And even though you knew you had to go back into it, it was, it sounds like it was easier to handle because at, at that point, was it like, okay, you knew you had this, you could always go back to it to, to um, medicate or to mm -hmm. make the pain lessen than what it really was. That's right. So, yeah, it, it, okay. it, it, it absolutely was a tool. Uh, not a good tool, you know, but it was, you know, uh, again, you, you take an 11 year old brain, it, it's not, it's not prepared to handle, you know, the trauma that was there before. And now you throw a chemical on it and it's just, you know, I, I've rewired everything now. Okay. Wow. My goodness. So after, so now that you're, it's, you're, 17. Um, mm -hmm. So by the time you said you hit your 20s, what happened when you hit your 20s? Um, what happened there? It, it, you know, it, things had in, things again, they just continue. They just continue to snowball. Um, it, everything is just completely out of control. Um, at this point in time, um, I'm dealing. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm selling not for money. Um, I'm selling to basically to pay for mine. And also um, you, you, when you deal with a low self-esteem like that, um, to, to be accepted is the biggest thing you want. Um, mm -hmm. And to walk around with that, um, that was, um, that was a big deal at, at that point. Um, again, not healthy. There's nothing healthy about it, but it was, um, you know, again, I just, I just, you found it. So, um, you know, that can never lead to anything good. Um, um, you know, uh, jail is inevitable. 
And it was, um, you know, but the sad thing is, is it wasn't that big a deal. You know, I know people who have gone it's like, you know what, I am whatever it was I did to go to jail. I am never doing that again. Um, to me, it was just um, it was just part of doing business. It, it's just that's just if you're going to live this life, if you're going to do this and, you know, um, uh, it's you, you, people looked people looked up to me um, as sick as that is and as twisted as that is. Um, I, I have no identity. Um, I, my, you know, work. And, uh, you know, it's like I told you yesterday, my, my worth was on physical things. Um, I had no worth outside of that. Uh, it was, it was money. It was cars. Uh, it was dope and it was alcohol. So, you know, in, in the bar, I was somebody, uh, because I, I, mm -hmm. I had no worth in myself anywhere else. You know, it was, it was just that. Um, so, you know, when, when you rely on something man-made or, or something in the world, um, to value yourself, whether it, you know, whether it, uh, a, a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse, whatever, um, there's no good going to come from that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I normalized it. I rationalized it. And, uh, you know, basically I just said, this is, this is just, you know, this is who you are. This is what you do. But the longer you do it, you don't see the phrase. You don't mm -hmm. see that, that things are closing in. And, um, you know, again, jail was just, um, you know, jail was just one of those things that came with it. Uh, did it bother me? It, it, uh, mm -hmm. Sadly, no. Um, sadly, that was normal to me. Um, you know, um, and with that, you've now got, you know, you've got a string of, there was just nothing but destruction behind me. Mm -hmm. Um, just a, a string of, of horrible relationships, my fault. Um, you know, um, people don't want you around employers, you know, you, you can hide it for a minute, but, um, you know, it, it eventually is going to catch up. And, and, you know, you start losing jobs. And in a small town, you start getting a name. And, um, you know, it, um, it by mid-20s, you know, when things really started going is now the, the, the depression, the depression is setting. And I have no purpose except for what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is, you know, when you, you know what you're doing is wrong. But you don't know what else to do, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. Yeah, so, it, it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Finish. Well, you know, I mean, you've, you've heard pastor after pastor say, you know, that, that that's the thing with sin. You know, you, 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 whether you knew it was wrong or right, I knew it was wrong. Um, because I was raised right. My mother, my grandparents, uh, I had uncles that spoke into my life. They raised me. I knew right and wrong. There's no, um, but when, uh, you know, it, it, you, it, you hear pastor after pastor say, you know, sin, it, it'll, it'll, it'll take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you there longer than you want to stay. And, and, and you'll do things you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, I, I, I had just dug that hole so deep. Um, my soul was dead. There was nothing. There was nothing in me. There was no, no emotion. Um, I fought to feel anything. Um, pain was the only thing that let me know I was still alive. Mm. Um, I, 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 I mean, I had known pain my whole life. And it's all I had known. And it was... Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a train wreck. It's a train wreck you're watching mm -hmm. in slow motion. And, and, and there's just, you know, and, and, and the people around me, they saw it and tried, you know, their best, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, you know, you need, you know, mom asked me, I was 24, 25. Mom asked me in the kitchen. She said, are you trying to kill yourself? 
Mm. She said, you know, the, the, the way you're living is intentional and, it, you know, it, it, it is, are you trying to kill you? Is death what you're looking for? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm having fun. This is great. You know? Oh. Um, so let's um I'll tell you what. So, all right. So now we're at that point <clears throat> where we want to talk about that point where you, you decided to change or what mm. was that moment? Like for me, it was, I had come to the end of myself. What was your end of self moment? What caused you to say, I can't do this anymore? What was that? When was that? And what was that? That was 2002 when mom passed. Um, mm, sorry. I had, she had, um, she had kept some stuff from me because people around me would, they, they didn't want mom was sick and i didn't know until 30 days before she, it was about a month before she passed um and i did uh i did put 30 days together that i didn't i, I stayed at the hospital with her uh at night and uh when um when she passed um that was uh, the, the 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 train was coming off the rails then. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it was it was downhill and it was downhill fast. Um, you know, I, I immediately, um, I immediately was lost. Um, that was that was an anchor. Um, that was a that was a safe place. Um, and uh I, I really lost um most of my um, I just it, that whole that was that, the really the only thing i could feel was her mm -hmm. and that gone um was um it, it, there really, there was really not going to be much recovery from that. Uh, it numbness at that point in time. It, it, everything I did was to numb. Uh, everything I did was uh, was to forget that. Um, and uh, you know that was. Um, see, the turning point hadn't come though. That was the beginning of the end. So that was two thousand and two. So I had eight more years. Um, but those eight years were, um, those eight years were hard. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was, uh, the abuse was full blown. It was, um, sure. it was, it was drink till you pass out, wake up, go to work and do it again. Um, wow. it was, um, It was, um, you know, I spent the last five, I spent the last five years daily, daily when I got up, it, it's, I, I've got a pastor at church now that, uh, he's, he, he does, uh, he does our small men's group and, uh, he keeps, he, he has this one phrase that he keeps coming back to and he keeps coming back to, um, and it's purpose. Um, and, and and he says that, that you have to have purpose. He said with purpose, purpose gives you boundaries. Um, at this point in time, um, I have no purpose. Um, at this point in time, all I have is alcohol and drugs. Mm. Um, I have, um, you know, it was for the last five years before from from 2005 to 2010, um, it was daily, every morning. Um, why should I not take my life today? What reason do I have to live today? Um, and, and, and that carried on um, until March 19th of 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I I had no reason that day. Um, 
I sat there on the edge of the bed. And, um, you know, as I said, I, I, I came from the country. Um, a, a, um, a sporting um, hunting culture. Um, I, you know, there was a, my pistol was on my bedside table every day. And um, March 19th, I got up and I looked at it. And uh, I did not have a reason not to do it. Um, I did not have a reason. Um, there was no purpose. There was no meaning um, for my existence. Um, none. Um, so as I sat there, it's, it's um, you know, it, it's, you, Pastor Keith also talks about defining moments of your life. That was a defining moment because um, the easy way would have been to end it. But uh, as I sat there, it's like you've got a choice to make. You can either get help um, or you can die. Um, and, uh, I, and I don't know why. You know, I, uh, it, you know, it, it, it was the only rational thought that I'd had, you know, in 30 years. Um, because it, it, it had taken over every thought I had, every thought, every, every minute, you know, was if, if I wasn't drinking, I was looking at my watch to get out of work so that I could, um, it, it, it was just all consuming. Um, you know, that, that morning, um, that morning, something had to change one way or another, something had to change. It, it, okay. it was just not going to last. Okay. Wow. So you had to make a decision to change. And That's right. what did, what did that, um, and, and this short time that we have left. So what did that, um, what did that change look like? And how did you get from where you were then to where you are now? What were some of the things or, you know, were there people that were, um, that the Lord allowed to open doors for you? Um, did he send people along your path? Um, but as I said before, you had to make that decision to change. And when you made that decision to change, can you tell us in the few minutes that we have left, what happened when you decided to live? When I got out of rehab, um, I, I, I joined with AA and NA and it was daily. I went to one meeting a day for two years. Um, because I didn't know anything else to do. Um, and um, I had uh, I had several people that came into my life, but I had one man that um, my sponsor, a great, great man. Um, and uh, he, he, you know, he's like, once I got my head clear, to where I could think uh, the, 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 the alcohol was out, the drugs were out. You know, I had 90 days of sobriety and, and my sponsor is like, you, you need to start coming to church with me, with me and my wife. Um, I had not been to the church, uh, you know, in, in 25 years. Uh, but, and, and, and it just, I guess the biggest progression that I saw was, was, after I accepted Jesus, um, and it's um you 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 don't you, you I don't want to sound like I, I did it. I discovered quick that, and it's like anything else, but it, it's it's completely different from anything else. That the 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 more you put in, where I am today, um is I've got men around me that, you know, that if, it, if it's not, if it's not kingdom business, we're not going to mess with it, you know, and it's, okay. it's um, the, 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 the people, the people that God put in my life immediately. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, no one knows better. You know, he made me. 
so to 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 know what it's going to take to get me back where I need to be, you know, it's a my my friend Bob. I absolutely cannot say enough um, uh, uh, about his impact on my life because I got to see him also go through some not so pleasant things um, as a recovering alcoholic, and he showed me you know, that you can handle things that, you know, you've got to lay this stuff down. You can't carry it. Uh, you can't do it by yourself. Um, you know, if, if, if you don't have faith in, uh, if you don't have faith in, 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 a in a, in a God that can do anything, um, any addiction, um, whatever the burden you know i've seen people put together you know three months maybe three years um i can't tell you the the, the early deaths the uh, the suicides the um I, I you know i told you yesterday there's not, i don't know how many funerals i've been to um if if you can't you've got to you know you, you've God, the, I'm telling you, if you can't lay it at the foot of the cross, you, you, it will kill you. It will, mm -hmm. it will absolutely kill you. Um, it still may not be an instant death. Mm -hmm. It's a still it John will, 10, 10 still kill and destroy. It's and you're right. Absolutely. It may not come like immediately, and it may just be over time, but it's right. coming. Because well, and and you said something. You said something yesterday, and it, it and I told you yesterday. It, it it will stick with me forever because um I like simple, um, mm -hmm. you know. And, and we were praying yesterday, and 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 you spoke of the sin of confusion. Um, man, that is so powerful, and, and it mm -hmm. is um it is, it is, you know. After you said that, you know, we got off the phone. It was so relevant in my life. It was mm. in the middle of everything I did, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it's it's, you know, I, I look back now. Even when I was living wrong, um, I was living for no one but me. Um, but after I came to the Lord, I look back so many times, uh, Miss Devine. I look back so many times. Um, my car, I, several cars with bullet holes in them. Um, I've been shot. I've been shot at. Um, I, twice I was in the hospital and uh, mom got the phone call. It's like, look, if there's anybody who wants to see him, they need to come because mm. he will not be here tomorrow. You know, and I look back after, you know, I look back even now, you know, even now 12 years clean, I look back and um, I see God's hand in my life. Mm -hmm. through it all you know i'm not living for him I, i'm doing nothing for the kingdom and he had his hand on me um you know it's it's uh, i i would just want to stress you know in in the last few minutes i would just want to stress to anybody listen i i don't care what it is i don't care what it is um but i will say this if 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 you've come to a place that you don't see anything, you can't find any worth in living anymore if you look to Jesus because that is where your worth has to come from. Your worth that you were gloriously created in his image. That's your worth. That is your worth. No matter what anybody in this world says, no matter how far you bat, where you're at right now, where you're at, do you look to the Lord and you'll find your worth. Mm -hmm. it, um, and, and it has to be. It, it can't be in anything else. I look to day i look today and, and and how we survive in this you know we we know what the world's coming to we know um and, and how you walk through it without faith 
you know, I mean, but you, you look at our suicide rate, you look at look at the rate of addiction, look at the rate of alcoholism. You know, all these numbers are just through the roof. Um, and, and without, you know, I don't know. It's it's. You know, look, look to the Lord for his. And, and if you would, do you mind if I read just one quick one quick piece of scripture it, it was, of course it, 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 well and it was just it, it's actually it's 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 psalms it's psalms 41 through 3 and i'm i'm sorry to look away but i, I don't have it i don't have it committed to memory but uh that's okay it's fine go right this ahead is, uh, th- this is david it says i waited patiently for the lord and he turned to me and he heard my cry for help <laughs> He brought me up from the desolate pit, out of the muddy clay. He set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and they will also trust in the Lord. The first time I read that, and I was just like, dude, that is me. That mm-hmm. is um, that is me that God is speaking to. Um. You know, I don't, I don't know where anybody is. You know, you, you, but, you know, we, we've, we've talked about them. You, you don't know where somebody's at because we can hide so well um, yes. in plain sight. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, um, you know, you don't know that person you reach out to that, you, you, know, you, you know, I laughed yesterday the name of the name of the podcast alone, but because how I got from Zebulon, Georgia to Anchorage, Alaska, mm-hmm. to go to a Tuesday night service at your church, because mm-hmm. my pastor and your pastor used to serve together. Mm-hmm. And after that service, me and you would have a brief encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a fabulous, it was, it was a wonderful night, but it was a brief encounter on the sidewalk, um, mm-hmm. to this platform, um, is nothing but divine. Absolutely nothing but, um, you know, ordained by God. Mm-hmm. All glory to God. It's, you know, like I was saying yesterday, um, People need to hear your testimony and people need to know that there's hope and people need to be encouraged. There's a lot of people that are going through and there's, I mean, and you know, with all the stuff that has happened, all the stuff that is happening. And a lot of times what happens, it happens is the enemy bombards the mind with thoughts and ideas and people step into those ideas and they, they become fearful. And then they have been in that, it pushes out whatever light that they may have, or if they have any, and it pushes out hope and it pushes out anything yes. that has to do with life. And so people mm. is- become isolated and they live and in, in, in isolation where, and, and not thinking that people need you, people need her, they need him because we are humans and we need each other to live regardless of what it, what anybody may or may not say. We need each other. So for just like um, Minister Keith is just saying, what he's saying, long story short, is this. We need each other. You know, God is your peace. He is your source. He is the one that delivers you out of all your troubles. It's not another man. God uses people, but God will use a person to help you find him. He will. Yes. I mean, you can like we're talking, you can turn on the TV and get a message that God is speaking to you about you because he loves you and he is so he cares so much about you he'll do whatever is necessary to make sure you are returned or restored back to him now for those of you who are contemplating suicide i'm going to tell you and i'm sure minister keith is in agreement that you don't have to do there is hope you can contact this station elevation tv network you can contact me divina stallworth you can contact Minister Keith Griffin, he is on Facebook. He has a email a, a email account. 
um, find us, hunt us down. You can uh, contact yes. your local church, your local police. But what I'm saying, you don't have to hope. That is not that is not the way to end, you know, because that's no. a temporary situation. You need yeah. something that's permanent. You need something that, that you can grab a hold to and hang yeah. on. Okay, because yeah. you don't, you don't. First and foremost, suicide is not the answer. Suicide is not the answer. Yeah. That's the, that's that ends yeah. it all. And if you don't yeah. know where you are headed when you leave here, you better find out because hell is well, real that's, and that's, heaven is real. It's real. Yeah, it's that, and that's really the other thing. Not a joke. Mm-hmm. I, I I look back and um, all those years, all those years. If I would have died, one overdose, one car wreck, Mm -hmm. um, that's eternity in hell uh, because I was not saved, was not saved. And and, and if if it has ever crossed your mind, if it has ever crossed your mind, absolute first thing you can do is you need to tell somebody. You need to find someone you can trust, Mm -hmm. a, a family member, a minister, a friend, you need to find someone find and somebody, verbalize that right now. Yes. Yes. Because the enemy is going to tell you. He's going to tell you nobody cares. He's going to tell you. He'll tell you all the lies. Um, and they're lies. They are lies. And we both know. And as in our closing moments, we both know what it is to live a life of fear and of hopelessness with no life and to believe we believe the lies of the enemy. And we yes. walked and carried that mantle of fear for years and years and years. But it was wonderful yeah. because God sent people who knew him, who walked with him and began to share with us about his love. Cause we weren't going to anybody's church. And even if we were in church, we weren't living any kind of way because to us it was we were so bombarded by fear. And I'm saying that word again because yes. I don't know what else to say except hopelessness and doubt, unbelief. And you believe that nobody cared, and the enemy is constantly throwing those darts at you over and over. So he's bombarding your mind so much that you think it's the truth. And then you live yeah. in that and you cut yourself off from society because you believe this is how I'm supposed to live. Nobody cares. Just like you said, nobody cares. Nobody loves me. But that is a lie because we yes. care and because we are yes. opening our hearts and our and, and our hearts to you and saying, hey, if you need somebody to talk to or if you know you need to reach out, then reach out to us and we can reach help you. Out. Or direct you to someone who is able to help you come out of the mindset of hopelessness, fear, suicide, the abuse, domestic violence, uh, rape, whatever oh. it is. Because you know what? We are a plethora of resources and we know a lot of people. So here we are. And, you know, in closing, in these closing moments, um, my prayer for you is that by the power of the Holy Spirit, and as he is ministering to your heart, as you have even watched a teeny tiny bit of this broadcast, he has pierced your heart and he is speaking to you now to say, hey, I am here. I love you. Let mm-hmm. me help you. And he is speaking words of encouragement. So I decree and declare that the mouth of the enemy is sealed against your ears so he can't he can't bombard your mind, that your mind is now bound to the mind of Christ. So you won't receive those thoughts. And we decree and declare that the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And one thing I hear the Lord saying is God is love. God is love. He is love. He is unconditional love. He's not, he, you don't owe him anything. He loves you and he wants you with himself. So will you make that choice today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior and to give him a chance to show you who he is. And that is a very powerful statement, especially nowadays, but we need the Lord. We, we are nothing without him. And I, this ain't no, this ain't no cult. This is the truth. This is the living word of God. This I'm a little beat up Bible. Absolutely. But this is the living word of God, and this is what he wants. So we're going to go ahead and close the broadcast. I am your hostess, Davina Stallworth, with Divine Intervention with our special guest, Minister Keith Griffith. 
But as we close out, I, I would ask uh, Minister Keith, can you please pray us out? And then we're yes. going to go ahead and um, close out for this particular broadcast. Can you pray us out, please? Absolutely. Lord, just, uh, just first and foremost, Lord, just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for Sister Davina, Lord, and uh, Pastor Thomas, Pastor Keith, just for being faithful um, and, and just carrying out. The task is put before us, Lord, to uh, to, to reach people, to, to let them know, know Lord, that, um, that, that, that you do love us, Lord. You love us not because we're good, Lord, because you're good. Lord, mm-hmm. uh, I would just ask uh, anyone who heard us today, Lord, that you would, uh, again, Lord, just touch their heart, Lord, just to give them peace, uh, to give them comfort. Um, Lord, and if there's anyone out there that heard this today that does not know you, Lord, I would just, uh, I would, Lord, just, again, just pierce their heart, Lord, and 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 and, and lead them, lead them to someone who, who, who likes Sister Davina, Brother Thomas, Lord, that can um, that can that can mentor them and and show them the love that you have for them, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity, uh, this opportunity to for this platform, Lord. Uh, I thank you for my sobriety, Lord. Um, Lord, we just love you. Uh, we lift you up, Lord. All the praise and all the glory be to you. We ask yes. all these things in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Lord, amen. Wow. Wow. Praise God. So, hey, before we go, one last thing. If you're interested in watching this show or this broadcast again, you can find Divine Intervention on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Elevation TV Network, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Are we on Twitter? Anyway, praise God. It's all good. It's so much stuff out there. Praise God. We're on a we're on a social media platform. Praise God. Um, I am looking for more stories like the one we had today. If you have a story about how God has, if you have a divine intervention by the Lord God Almighty, mm-hmm. I want to hear from you. So I need you to contact me so I can tell, so we can tell your story so the whole world right. can know that there is, God is real and that there is hope mm-hmm. and there is encouragement out there for you right. and the masses. So Minister mm-hmm. Keith, thank you so much for joining us on today. Um, just in lieu of all that we, <laughs> all that's going on, thank you for coming on this beautiful, Same. beautiful day. We really appreciate you. And uh, after we're going to go ahead and close out, but what I will ask you to do, just give me a minute before we shut everything mm-hmm. down and uh, I'll talk to you behind the scenes. So again, thank you all for joining us on today. We are so glad to have you. And let's see here. What are we doing here? <laughs> we're so glad I'm to happy. have you join us on today. So be blessed. And until next time, shift because there is a champion in you. Love you. Until next time. Bye.